Hello, I am Kiatrik. I am a trainer for making games with Construct 2. I am a moderator on Skara.com forums. I am an indie game maker and game designer enthusiast. I am making this video tutorial today for Envato Game Dave Touch Plus. So go back to the layouts, add a new layer, we'll name it Action, and we will add a new sprite. There, I won't just open one, but I will go in the Animation Frame dialog and import frames directly. I will go in Game Dev, Ship, and select F1 to F4. I could have used also the sprite sheets. Let's keep that for later. I suppress the first flame, uh, the first frame. You can see how it looks by previewing the current animation. Right click on the current animation and preview it. So it does not work as intended because it's not looping at the moment. So put it to yes, preview again, and here you have the current impression of flames. The frames are played one after the other in loop. So it's pretty nice. Let's rename this to player. And if you just press F5 right now, as you can see, we have our player in the in the background. But for now, I can't move it, and as you will see, it will at some point just go out of the screen. To prevent the player object from going out of the screen we'll have to reposition it on a regular basis. So we will right click on the current event, add a sub-event and we will check for the X position, be sure, and it will happen only when it's less than scroll X minus the half of the window width added to the player with half. So actually it means that at this moment my player is on screen, it's okay, but from the moment it will be like something like this, you know, it will be kind of out of the screen and we will want to reposition it right away. So there we set player, set X to the very same. Scroll X minus window width div divided by 2 plus player dot width divided by 2. And this means that any time we should have the player at least be in this position. So let's test it. It will go on the left, on the left and now it stays on screen. As you can see, it's automatically repositioned. Pretty interesting. Now back to our project. We will want now to control the sprite with the keyboard. So we can add a new object and it will be keyboard in input. Insert it. Go into the event sheet and add a new event, keyboard, key is down and we will press the left arrow. What will happen then is that we will want our X position. There I will use a keyword pretty interesting which is self and it does refer to the current object. So you can have several 
self references along your code it will always refer to the object type and even the instance that you are setting the action for so self x minus for now I will just say 100 multiplied by dt but I forgot to put some value what I want there is to add in the player object an instance variable that I will name x speed and that will represent the, ma the maximum amount of pixels I wanted to move every second and so right now going back to the code I will then modify the self dot x speed x speed multiplied by dt I, w I will want this for every for every arrows that are pressed down I will also want a y speed so x is for the horizontal movement and y is for the vertical movement but in the end from a code perspective it's very much the same so I've just cloned an event to do so hold on the control key select your event and drag drop it it will make a new a copy of this event and so right now I can double click the condition as you've noticed there is a difference between the event and the condition itself so modify it I don't want the left arrow right there but the right arrow and another modification I don't want to remove some position but add to it now for the up arrow I will go back because it's not the X I want to set but the Y and modify the Y self Y speed and the same for the down arrow on which I will add because yes the bigger the Y is the more at the bottom of your screen it is so if you want right there see the positions right now I have 50 of Y and if I'm moving it down now I'm 390 and same for X on the left it's a small number on the right it's a bigger number 616 right there and finally what I will want to do is to um, modify well set some values for the player x speed and y speed I will set it to 250 for the x and 150 for the y and if I preview and press my buttons yeah now the arrows are moving and so is the sprites Oh, as you can see we haven't yet well defined everything I can go on the right I can go out of the screen at the bottom and at the top let's change that put more limits to it so w we won't have a different height there what we see on the um, on the game uh, in matter of height is actually what only we can reach so we we'll just add a behavior right there add a behavior bound to layout and as you can s as you will see right there with this simple behavior right now I don't have more to do and yet I'm limited I'm limited on top and bottom still not on the right and still on the left but because of the code we've made so it's about the same thing right there what I want is for this to happen where when X is greater than scroll X plus but minus 
and right there it's the same plus and minus and so we shouldn't be able to go yeah on the right fine right before adding the shooting we will make a bit of tidying up in our event sheet not so much tidying up but adding more meaning we will be adding right click comments and so the first comment is scrolling and like events you can move it away and like events if you hold down the control key and drag drop it you can simply clone it limit our players our ship movements in the layouts and then right there we have the keyboard controls it's important to comment any project because it gives meaning and it's making it easier if anyone else than you has to look into your code to quicker understand what the code is doing now for the shooting we will be needing to add a new object a new sprite in our layer in our layout, layer action we will import frames once again and this time is the bullet bullet 0 to 2 open but this time it's not an animation that I want so I will just change the speed of the animation to 0 meaning that whatever animation frame I'm displaying it will be the only animation frame that will be shown and so it will allow us with a single object several textures rename it to bullets and let's add a few behaviors first behavior we want it to destroy outside of layout so this means that this very bullet we are doing at the moment will simply be destroyed right away as soon as the project is executed so we won't have to deal with it anymore it's good for memory resource management and add the bullet behavior the bullet behavior is a behavior that will make the object uh, the instance automatically automatically move by itself speed 400 it's okay set angle yes anyway we won't change it so what I want now is to add a new event keyboard on key pressed and the key being space I will want the to create an object bullet in the layer action at the current player dot x position and player dot y position so right now if I'm testing this project as you can see I just can shoot my way through but it also means that I need to mash my button which is not exactly what I want as you can see it creates the bullet from the image point which is not exactly very visually good looking so I will also add a bullet move to bottom of the layer so this way if you we quickly test it feels like the bullet goes from the nose of the player which is better looking but as as I said mashing mashing the space button is not exactly what I'm really looking for so I will have some sort of cooldown and automate the fire of the player so I will need to add more instance variables to my player I will put there a cooldown I will also add a fire rate and for now it should be okay 
Also, it won't be a on key pressed event, but a key is down event with space once more. But what I will do is add a sub event player compare the instance variable cooldown is equal to minus one. And so only when cooldown is equal to minus one will I create a bullet object. So now what I need to do is to actually make it so that at some point in time the cooldown value will be minus one. And also I will right there set the value of cooldown to zero so that it's a different value and it won't create several bullets at the same time in the in the consecutive uh, consecutive time so right now to handle this i will make a new event compare instance variable whenever cooldown is greater or equal to zero i will simply add to cooldown the value of dt and finally when the player cooldown is greater or equal to self dot fire rate I will set the cooldown to minus one and so they're modifying the value of fire rate to 0 0.15 for example if I test I'm pressing space down as you can see I have my bullets created on a timely fashion and from there you can even tweak it if you think that it's the fire rate is at the moment too fast the greater the number the lower the fire rate will be so let's see if I put 0 0.55 I'm creating far less bullets as you can see and I'm only pressing which is closer to what I'm interested in but there is something also I still want to be able to shoot whenever I'm releasing the space key so it would be up to the player to either just pressing the space key down and it will automatically shoot or to be able to mash the button according to the situation if they want to so I will be adding a new event right there keyboard on key released space okay I will put it right there and actually I will just control all the control key down uh, on an action drag drop the action it works like for events and so right now if I'm testing space even when I release and if I let it down I mash, I just press once, I'm mashing, it works. From now on, I think we have our repeated fire, so we will just add it right there as a comment, repeated fire handling, and we have pretty much the whole control of our player, which is pretty much, pretty much okay. We will get back to this very event right there as we will be implementing the pickups.